We've got 12 items. I'm going to do this all in one buyer consultation. Now, do you think I can cover these 12 items in 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. So but you already know that a buyer consultation can't be done in 10 minutes. I'm already telling you that. Now, right now, I'm seeing more cancellations in real estate than I've ever seen in 18 years. So I don't know if there's anybody here in real estate more than 18 years, but I'm, I'm seeing anywhere from 15 to 20% of all pendings cancel. 15 to 20%. Now normally that's about 10%. So that's a really big increase, guys. And it's concerning to me because it's not necessary. And I got a lot of agents saying, Rich, I got a problem. Can you help me? Of course I could, right? I'm always willing to help. And predominantly, most of them are by newer agents who can't control the transaction. Most of them are by newer agents who are not in control of the transaction. And when I ask the one question that, that links them all together, is did you do a buyer consultation? 75% of them say no. Out of the 25% that say yes, I say, okay, so how long was it? I'm, not, I'm coming from curiosity. I'm not coming to say you did it wrong. And most of them say 10 minutes. If you don't set an expectation up with people, you're part of the 15 to 20% that are getting cancellations. Right? So this the consultation you're gonna see, um, depending if the person talks a lot or talks a little, if they're not very talkative, will take you 30 minutes. If they talk a lot, it will take 60 minutes. So if you do it in less than 30 minutes, I can tell you, you didn't cover all of those bullet points. Positively, right? Because if I set expectations and what I tell people is the sale is made in the consultation. It's not made when you show the house. It's not made at the closing table. I don't know if I have a buyer. If they make it through the consultation, I'll know if I have a buyer or not, right? And I think that when I ask people, the, un, the untold message is agents are afraid that they're gonna lose the buyer. And what I tell them is you can't lose something you don't have. You don't know if you have a buyer until the consultation is done. You don't know that you have a buyer when it starts. And you have to be willing to walk away from a person who's not going to do things your way. Remember, this is your license, not theirs. So I don't come off as an authoritarian, you're gonna see in the consultation, but I don't take anybody's guff either. And I do it in a professional manner by asking questions and it becomes just what we call it, a consultation, not a lecture. It's a consult, because I'm constantly prying asking questions to see how I can serve this person. Now, I highly recommend, I taught this class the last time 10 years ago in Lake Nona. It is on my, uh, my YouTube channel. It's called Buyer's Consultation. It was 37 minutes. The agent's name was John Ebersmeyer, who is in front of the classroom posing as a doctor. He was the most difficult person I've ever interviewed in my life. And I so appreciated him because he gave me about 10 or 12 different objections, which I had to overcome. And at one point in the video, I had to tell him and remind him that today was an interview. And he says quickly, says, I know I'm interviewing you. And I says, well, that's half of the equation. It is a two way interview. You're interviewing me and I'm interviewing you to see if we're a match. And he said, well, what do you mean? And I said, if I don't feel that we're a match, I'm going to ask you one of two things. Do you want me to find another agent for you? Or would you like to find your own? And he said, well, my brother recommended you to me. I said, I totally get that, but that doesn't mean we're a match. So that kind of took a lot of steam out of him in a professional manner. And I just don't think you guys are doing that. 
Because again, I think we're coming from a place of fear and you're afraid you're gonna lose the customer. He was, he was somewhat rude uh, in the consultation and I had to make a decision do I continue with this person? Is, is he gonna do things by the book? Or is he gonna to wanna to do things his way? Because if I felt the customer wants to do it their way, typically, I would not work with them. And that's just me. I'm not telling you how to run your business. Because if you have a small problem today at the consultation, it only amplifies every day you get closer to the closing date. The insane become more insane. Mm -hmm. It's like insane become insane squared. Mm -hmm. If there's such a term. Now, some of you are laughing because you've dealt with difficult people. Has anybody ever dealt with a buyer that you wish you never dealt with? I want to give back the commission. Because the closer it gets, the stress goes up. Mm -hmm. And then the absence of expectations, mm -hmm. they become insane. Mm -hmm. So I've got to set I've got to set the stage from right from the get go. Now, I don't know who's gonna. I didn't plan this out. I don't know who's gonna be my guinea pig and come up here. I want you to give me objections. I don't care how many. I don't care what they are, so long as they're legitimate objections. Don't make up stuff off the cuff that you would never hear from in a real transaction. Right. So I, I want whoever's going to do it to whatever objections you have heard in the past about whatever timing finance not sharing information anything like that so long as it's a, an objection you've heard and it's real i'm okay with that and i want you to be okay with that the, this may be a 10-minute consultation if i decide to fire the person because i did not work with everybody Remember what I said, I didn't know if I had a buyer until the end of the consultation, not the beginning. So if the person was really tough, and, and again, that's why I want you to watch the John Ebersmeyer one, uh, it's 37 minutes, is because he was extremely tough and he was borderline where I was gonna not, I was gonna show people how you fire a customer professionally. And I chose not to, I stuck it out, he toned it down a little bit, I think he felt where I was going. And he's an agent, he wasn't a doctor by the way. But if I can get through all of those objections, and I was so grateful that he gave me a rough time because it shows you there's no objection they can give you, a buyer, that you can't overcome. Because one of, one of the answers is you may have to let them go and fire you too. Does that make sense? Is your YouTube just your name? Yeah, just my name. When I Googled it last night, I haven't watched it in a really long time, I watched it last night. And so just so you know, I prepared for about an hour and a half last night for this morning class, because I haven't taught this class in 10 years. Um, so whenever you're asked to teach a class, don't come up here and wing it. Prepare for the class. I prepared for 90 minutes out of my personal time with my family last night, so you can have the best possible experience this morning. Does that make sense? Because I haven't done it in 10 years. And I will tell you one thing, once you get this down pat, you'll probably say, are you sure you don't do this all the time? Because it's smooth, it, it just flows. Right? What I'm about to have is a conversation. It's just gonna be a conversation with somebody. So with that being said, what are some of the things that you would like to take away from today's class before we actually start and do the, the exercise? What are some of the things you guys wanna take out? Just shout it out. And if you're on Zoom, just shout it out. Objection, confidence. Confidence. Oh, both of you said the word confidence at the same time. <laughs> Beautiful. So confidence. I want you to look at my level of confidence, the way I handle the situation. And you may hear me say today that that's a great question. Regina, I don't have a clue to what the answer is, but if you give me 24 hours, I'll find one for you. But I'm still confident in what I'm saying. I don't waffle. Don't waffle. I don't pretend to know everything. Because if you do, and you answer a question that you don't know the answer, then you've just lied. Better to be honest and a person respect you for your honesty and integrity than, than trying to impress people to make like you know everything. We don't know everything. I do not know everything. You do not know everything. So just tell people when you don't know something, say I don't know. People will respect you more. So love that. What else do you want to take away from today's class? How to uh, overcome that. I'm going to go to uh, a lower commission brokerage or uh, almost no commission 
listed on the internet MLS. I don't know, was it Redfish or Redline or whatever? Redfin. Yeah, it wouldn't be a buyer. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, but but um, some buyers, he's got a legitimate point. Some buyers feel that if the commission's less, that they're going to get a better deal. Is How that true? How would they know the commission? How would they know? They're not paying the commission. Yeah. I, I get it. The, the seller's paying the commission, but Redfin is known for taking 1% listings. There's my objection, Hansel. You're not paying the commission. <laughs> Yeah. You would be 100% correct. I'm not sure that you're going to win the person over with it, though. You're not going to give the buyer a warm and fun, a fun, you know, fuzzy with that. But uh, what else, guys? That's a that's a valid point. Yeah. I'm here. Do we know who that was in Zoom? Whoever that was, I'm listening. I am thinking. I am thinking. So far, who is that speaking? Ariel. Ariel? So, yeah. so far, yeah. you, you are my favorite, Ariel. I'm sure there'll be better questions and comments. However, up till now, you are my favorite. I'm giving you the trophy to hold for the, for the best comment so far. Uh, and that, you are 100% correct. I think that we get stuck in a place where we just wing things because whether we're experienced and we think we know it, uh, I've got 18 years of experience. What did I tell you? How much time did I spend last night preparing for today's class? Oh, 90 minutes. Preparation. Do you think so? Did I prepare for buyer consultations the day before? Say yes. 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 Preparation yes. is key for everything, guys. Yeah. I wanted the best possible experience for you today, so I prepared for the class. When I was going before a buyer or a seller, I prepared for those too. So, absolutely. Preparation is key. You must prepare for everything. What else would you guys want to take away to? I just want to see your framing, how you do your flow, how you take control of the Yeah, so, so uh, transitions. How do we go from one topic to another topic? We're going to transition it. Now, sometimes a buyer may want ask you ask me a question, right, to like where maybe we're on step two, and he's asking me about step 11, right? And, and so we've got to learn to park things on a back burner and say, that's a great question, Raj. I love that question. Is it okay if we put that on the back burner and I'm going to address that? Just I'm going to follow a format so that it'll make more sense to you than just answer it right out right now because it may not make sense if I just answer your question. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. And what do you think most people will say when you ask for permission? No. You've got to put it on a back burner and tell them. Is it okay if we just park that on a, a back burner temporarily for about 15 minutes until I can get to that portion? Is that okay? And I've never heard anybody say, no, I want to know now. Because that's a key indicator that I may not want to deal business with them. Yes, yes. So, so my question would be, uh, is there a preferred environment for this consultation? Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> like dinner, coffee, Zoom, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So all of the above. Okay. Uh, so if the person is out of town, Zoom, Zoom. I don't want to do it on a phone call. I want to see body language. I want to make eye contact. I want to see if they're answering their email while I'm speaking to them. So if they're if they're in, if you have a lady in LA, right? I want Zoom so I can see the lady in LA, the buyer in LA, right? So preferably if they're here, it's in person, right? Um, so in person, ideal is conference room in the market. Because here you have all the tools necessary. If something arises or a question is asked that you don't have an answer to, you can you're going to take two seconds, find whoever, and get an answer. Now, does it always work out that way? The answer is no. So no. where did I? Where did I love you participated? Um, so where did I do it? Um, Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's, or the office? I'm not a Starbucks guy. So it was Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's, and what I would do is I would actually camp out for about an hour. In the in wherever, 
and in a booth with a person and that in other words let's say they wanted to go to point i did a lot of business out point sienna does everybody know what never never land is that's, that's what we call point sienna it's like never never going there again right Amen. it is very far and there's only one way out there pleasant hill road is the only way to get there. it's crazy and so i didn't want to drive from lake nona to never never land and go back and forth so I would go and meet at the McDonald's or at Dunkin' Donuts, and I'd spend a day there. And that's where I'd do the consultation if that's where they were from or interested in. So all of the above, it depends on the circumstances. Now, do some people not want to meet with us? They just want to see the house. Yeah. Say yes. Yeah. Yes, Beth, did you? Um, Josephine would like to, she has her hand raised. Okay. Yeah, Josephine. Yeah, I raised it physically, too. Um, like the other one said, um, would like to develop confidence and you will develop confidence through the um, preparation. And in my case, I want to know if we can have a written version of your preparation, your buyer consultation. So we are filming this and we already have one on, on a YouTube, my YouTube channel from 10 years ago, which is extremely relevant today. I would okay. recommend, I would recommend everybody to watch the one that's already on my YouTube channel from 10 years ago. It's very relevant. And then this one will be put on the Claremont's YouTube channel, correct, Bethany? Yes. Is there your YouTube? I'm putting this in the chat. Is it Richard Carpentieri or Rich Carpentieri? Good question. I don't know. <laughs> wow, let's see. Google, Google I think it's Richard. It <laughs> I, I think it's Richard on my YouTube channel, but I'm not sure. I let's think it's see. Richard. I don't go there that often, to be honest, as you can say. Google, but I think that you watch these over and over again. And, and the comment you made is extremely important about confidence, guys, because I, I will tell you this, if I can give you the formula for confidence. Rich. Yes. It's rich. Okay. It's rich. Know. So um, repetition builds confidence and confidence builds skill set. I'm giving you the formula. Repetition builds confidence. Confidence builds skill set. Skill set. And the example I like to give is a child riding a bicycle for the first time. If you're a parent or a grandparent or an aunt, you might have participated or watched somebody who was five years old learn how to ride a bike. And the first time you put them on that bicycle, most of the time there's fear, right? They're afraid, why? Because they've never done it before, right? So they exhibit this factor of fear and the more you do it with them and they actually get it, they start to build confidence. They have to do it over and over. Now, it's no different in real estate. And one of the things that I always say is amateurs do things until they get it right. Professional do things until they don't get it wrong. So my question is, are you an amateur or a professional? Because if you're practicing to, to the point you get it right, that's what amateurs do. Pros in baseball, they take batting and fielding practice and they, they specifically practice a double play combination until they don't get it wrong between shortstop, second baseman, and first baseman. They do this all the, for like hours. Yes, Pat. Uh, Josephine has her hand raised again. That's okay. Go ahead, Josephine. Oh, I just wanted to say my, one of my favorite things. People say practice makes perfect. It does not. You gotta practice it correctly to make it perfect. Perfect. Practice it wrong and it's still be wrong. Perfect practice makes perfect. Exactly. I love that. So guys, uh, any other comments or questions before we actually do it and get started? Because I'm excited to get in. Okay, so who would like to, um, who would like to be my uh, buyer? John. John Hernandez pointed to Tom because he said he's the toughest guy That's in the room. We want Tom. <laughs> so I, it doesn't matter to me, man or woman, doesn't matter. Who would you, who would like to volunteer? And I don't want to lay down. In other words, don't say yes to everything I say. I want real objections, relevant objections, not insane ones. Like I'm waiting for the planetary uh, galaxy to line up with a blue moon. Don't give me that kind of stuff. Um, so who would like to sit up there? Come on, Regina. That's yeah. real That's real stuff, though. Well, I mean, yeah. well, and, 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 <laughs> in feng shui, it's possible. It's possible. It, I if swear, that, that is real right. stuff. Come on up here. So um, tell me, before we start, um, is this real life? You're married. Joe's your husband. Blah blah blah. Mm. Okay, beautiful. So typically, um, <laughs> we're gonna make believe Joe is sitting right beside you. Okay. Joe, you lost a lot of weight. Oh my God, you look great, Joe. 
Yeah. So John, I'm going to turn. John can sit next to her. John, do you want to pull up a chair? So for this for this exercise, your name is jo. John Morales. <laughs> so you can come right right over here. You guys are married. You're not getting divorced. Go right over there. You have less a lot of weight. <laughs> you shrunk about four inches too. <laughs> and I apologize for turning my back to you, but I, I want to make sure we're in the camera at the same time. So guys, uh, welcome into the office today. My name's Rich Carpenter. It's a blessing to meet you guys. Thank you. Absolutely. So um, first of all, before we start, I want to say thank you for coming in. You're, I, I take this very seriously mm -hmm. about your investment in time. So I don't want to waste your time. What I found from experience is that the more time we spend in here in this environment, mm -hmm. the less time we're gonna spend in the car looking outside. That's good. Is that okay with like you? like to save time, right? Oh, sure yeah. yeah. And, and so um, one of the things, and I'm gonna start, is it okay if I take notes? Yeah. Because when you say things, when I, when I have a lot of questions, um, I wanna make sure that I write down all the things that are important so I don't miss anything. Perfect. So we can uh, find the perfect house for you. So the goal for today is gonna to be to find the perfect house for the least amount of money in the shortest amount of time with the least amount of headaches. And in today's market, as I'm gonna show you, uh, sometimes that's not possible, but we're gonna do our very best. So the goal is to have a strategy when you leave here of how we're gonna buy real estate. Does that work for you guys? Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. So tell me in the first place, why are you looking to move? And I noticed from the email you said you're looking to move to Kings Ridge. Here in Claremont. You guys want to dye your hair. So good for 55 bucks. Mom is looking hot. Okay, so tell me, so tell me why why you look at the grass to Claremont. Why, why are we looking to move? What is the... Well, King's Ridge, I mean, you don't have to do your lawn, you get two golf courses. I mean, we've done a lot of research on King's Ridge. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you don't have to lift a finger, basically. And the location is great. Yeah, location. Easy access to everything. Easy to pu by, by Publix, San Jose's. And do you have any family members in the area here, too? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Who, and who would that be? My Nieces, mom. nephews, mom. Yeah. Okay. Grandkids, father in law, grandkids. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sister, niece, and nephew. Yeah. So I'm writing all this down. I want to get that. So that's a pretty powerful reason. I love that. So talk to me a little bit about do you have a house that you need to sell right now? Is that uh, so there's the purchase here, in other words, contingent upon you selling a house somewhere else? Yes. Okay. So I, I would like to raise my hand right now. Is that okay if I raise my hand? Do you know what I'm raising my hand to? No. I would like to interview for that job also today. So I'm not only interested in helping you to buy a house, if you have it listed already, I'd like to uh, raise my hand for that job also. Where is the house at? Is it in this state or is it local? Uh, yeah, California actually. Uh, California. So Regina, you were looking at like at Joe, <laughs> like to, if you didn't know where it was, are you sure it's in California? <laughs> Okay. So it's in California, so... Well, he wants to list it. He can't list it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, the actual, <laughs> well, the actual truth is, no, I'm not, but it really doesn't matter. Working for an organization that has 185,000 agents, we're the largest real estate brokerage in the world. Um, we have luxury agents in every state, and I'd love to find one that's going to be best suited for you to set that up so we can take your listing in California with a luxury agent. Does that work for you? He thinks we have a nice house. He's saying luxury. Sure <laughs> well, what I've learned from experience over the last two years, there are no inexpensive houses in the state of California. Average True price that. in the state of California is over a million dollars now. So we would consider that luxury. Yeah. So you want a luxury agent, not yeah, a new agent. Yeah, we want a luxury agent. Yeah. Yeah, love that, love that. Um, so talk to me about time frame now. So what's your time frame? When are you actually looking to move permanently here to Florida? Uh, by the end of October. Anything specific about October? Uh, time for the holidays with the grandkids. Yeah, before before all the holiday stuff hits. Yeah. yeah. So we're actually in August, so that's 60 days. Mm -hmm. So that would give us roughly 30 days to find a house, 30 days to close on it. Does that sound about right to you guys? And we only want to move one time, we're not moving twice. Okay, explain. 
So if we have to sell our house in California, we don't want to have to move here oh, and then move that. again. Okay. So right. we only want to move one thing. time. So Sorry. ideally for you to have a piggyback closing, so you close on your house over there. Yeah. So you have the, now do you need the money from the sale over there to close over here? Or is yeah. it possible, could you close, do you have enough money to close on the house here without that money and then close a couple of days later on that one? No. Um, okay. We no. need the money from the sale. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. And this is going to be life changing for you guys to be close to your family. So what is that, what, how excited is your family about this, about you moving closer to them? Yeah. Super excited. The grandkids right. are asking for rides on the highway already. Are they really? <laughs> <laughs> you got helmets? Well, of course. Yeah, okay. I'm hoping you've got some small helmets for the grandkids if they're little ones. <laughs> so I want to ask you a couple of questions, and I'm sure you, because you're looking at an experience, a, a, a more wiser community that you're looking at. Right? Yeah. We don't use the word older, right? We use the word wiser. Yeah. So uh, have you ever bought a house before? Yes. So I'd like to find out from, from your infinite wisdom, uh, what would a great experience look like to you in buying real estate? Can you name one? Um, great communication. So you're looking for, okay, so communication, what else? Convenience. What do you mean by convenience? Uh, really just making the whole process as smooth as possible as far as uh, with documents, going back and forth, and then also with the home search, trying to uh, minimize the search as much as possible, finding the right one, wasting a lot of time. So basically not wasting your time showing your houses, listening, being present in the conversation, showing you the houses you're interested in. Okay, what else? For me, it's the one close, not to move twice. For me, that's like top on my priority. List. So I'm gonna put write down one move and put an asterisk because that's really important. Mm -hmm. You can put two asterisks because I don't want to be in hotels in between any of this, you know, extra stuff. So you don't want to have to move everything twice. Uh, no. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so what else would make a great experience for you in a transaction in real estate? same day close you know that i think that would really so well, piggyback closing yeah and you helping us with the all the vendors okay like a moving truck and the inspectors of course um handyman anything that comes up with the house if we need it fixed oh we need help with all those vendors sure so if i were to share with you my preferred vendor list that would be helpful to you to you know we have painters with several of them to give you mm -hmm. uh, these are people we've done business with in the past now i don't have any vested interest financially in these companies so i don't make any money off any of this but i would love to share with you including where your electrical be garbage i hook that up garbage pick up water painters, electricians, sheet rockers, handyman, roofers. So if you need any of them, you have them at your disposal. Would that work for you? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Let's talk about the poor experience that you've had in buying real estate. Have you ever had a bad transaction? That, that one time. So. Tell me about that. Uh, you know, <laughs> well, uh, really, it just seemed like we weren't getting heard by our agent. Uh, we let them know we really wanted to know what was going on with the whole process. So he wasn't paying attention, uh, no, lack of communication. Right. What else? Um, they were sending us houses that we really just weren't interested in. And, you know, we wanted to see like these other houses and the agents like, no, we can't see those or. Or you couldn't get us in fast enough and then it was sold. Yeah, we weren't getting offers accepted. That was like a huge thing. Mm -hmm. So that was a bad he was taking all these offers and we weren't getting anything accepted. Okay. Did they sit down and do a buyer consultation like we're doing now to explain the market and what the because I'm sure the market in California is different than what it is here in Florida. And yeah. that's what the remember I said we're gonna leave this session with strategy mm -hmm. and how to buy the perfect houses your dream. So yeah, okay. So what else? So you said the person didn't listen to you. There was a lack of communi uh, communication. They took too long to respond when, when they did communicate. Uh, you lost out on some houses. What else? I think there was one where that delayed closing happened. They didn't tell us about a transfer in before closing. So we got to the table and never wired. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I just had a hard time to hearing you. Can you just yeah. speak up a little? So we made it to the closing table and signed right. all the documents. Come to find out we weren't going to get keys the same day because we didn't send the money in advance. 
Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that, that has happened in the past. And so typically what happens, it's not the money that you didn't send, it's the money that your bank didn't send if there's a mortgage. So typically a title company, this is a title state, will not release keys until the bank fully funds the mortgage. So we're gonna be the title company, I'm not the title agent, I handle real estate, will be in close contact with whoever the title company is uh, and be able to see if they can get that money wired, but I can't guarantee because I'm not the title company and I'm not the bank. But I will stay on top of the transaction to keep you in communication so you're up to date that if the money is wired before the closing, some banks will uh, wire the money the day before. And if that happens, we'll have no problem. Uh, okay. However, if they wait till see the closing documents, it's possible the wire may not happen until the following day, which means you won't have keys for the day. Now, if the closing's on a Friday, the following day means Monday. So one of the things I'm gonna advise us to, we're not gonna go for Friday closing for that reason exactly, because you're gonna close and not get keys to Monday. So if we close on a Thursday, it's possible we can wait till Friday because of the money wire, and we don't want to go from Friday to Monday. So are you okay right now staying away from Friday closings? Yeah. Exactly for that reason. And this is why we're discussing this. We're coming up with a strategy. So there's what no about, Friday closings. And what about attorneys? You guys have attorneys here? Because we have an attorney back home, and we want them to review the documents. Uh, yes, we do have real estate attorneys here. I am not an attorney, so you are free at will. That would be at your own expense to review the documents. We are not a, an attorney state to close, we're a title state. Mm -hmm. So California sounds to me like they might be an attorney state, but you're absolutely welcome to review any of the documents. One of the things I will tell you, but prior, is attorneys have a habit, when they look at a contract, they're gonna want verbiage changed. We will do none of that. The contract is prepared by the state of Florida. It's been adopted by the bar, the board for, for legal, and for the, the NAR, which is real estate. And the contract is the contract. So if your attorney says, I want this clause, we're not taking anything out of the contract. It's a Florida state contract. That's the one that we use. So you can use them for advice, but we're not changing verbiage on contract. Any questions about that? Okay, beautiful. Anything else that would make an experience poor for you? I can't think of anything else, no. Okay. So I want to show you a video because my, my goal is again for a strategy through education. So I'm going to show you exactly what's going on in the market. And so the, this video was prepared by the board, not by me and not by my office. So this is the MLS board that all of the agents in Central Florida belong to. There's over 30,000 agents. So this is not uh, directed to any one person. It's more for educational persons. So let me play that video. It's about a minute and three seconds. So you can see, and I would like for you to ask me questions about it. During the month of June, 2022, during the month of June, 2022, the Orlando housing market inventory has increased compared to the same month last year. In addition, the median price also increased. All lost sales decreased. A total of 3,946 homes sold during the month. A tally that is 14% less than the 4,414 sales in the same month during 2021. The median price of an Orlando home sold in June 2022 was $387,000, which is a 23% increase compared to the same month last year. The limited number of homes available for sale in Orlando is still a challenge for buyers. Compared to the same month in 2021, the number of homes on the market increased by 76%. Compared to the last month, there are 41% more properties available. There are currently 5,367 homes listed for sale. Whether you're looking to buy, sell, or rent, contact a realtor today so you can get moving. So what did you know? Between now and April, I'm not really sure we want to watch the rest of the YouTube videos. <laughs> there is the biggest housing opportunity. Yep. So what did you take away from that one minute video? Well, Rich, I gotta say, I think you're gonna get us a good deal since sales are down. So be able to maybe get us under, under list price. Well, if you're reading that correctly, what does it say? What are you looking at, which line? Uh, close sales down 14%. Mm -hmm. 
So that's year over year. So can I put that into context for you, John? Yeah, of course. Okay, so 2021 was the second highest amount of houses sold in any one year in the last 100 years. So right now, this year, we're targeting to be the fourth best year over the last 100 years. So even though it's down 14%, we're still pacing ahead of 96 other years that happened in the last 100. So when you put that into context, yes, it is down because last year the market was insanity squared this year is just insane <laughs> does that kind of make sense to you so, put that we have, so less offers that we have to make probably explain what you mean by less offers like there's a better chance if we make an offer that'll get accepted versus last year it would. Yeah, that, that would be accurate so an accurate uh, picture would be last year a house was listed and within 48 hours uh, there would probably be six, five or six offers. Uh, two or three of them would be cash and four of them would be over asking price. Uh, so typically, what do you think most sellers will choose? The highest offer or the lowest offer? Highest. So the people, so if there's five offers, that means one person buys the house and what happens to the other four? They have to go look for another house. Yeah, they get a, a phone call or an email from the listing agent says, I'm so sorry. With, we can keep your offer on backup. Uh, at this point, we've chosen another offer. So is it your goal to write offers or is it your goal to go out and buy a house? To buy a house, yeah. Okay, so you do understand. And so basic, based on inventory, so I wanna go over what the market is. We define a balanced <coughs> market by having six months of inventory. So let's just say, what is it? We'll get it round off the numbers. Is that okay if we make the numbers round for math? Sure. So let's say in a balance, let's say we're selling 4,000 houses per month. When I say we, I don't mean my office, I mean the whole board. Mm -hmm. If we're selling 4,000 houses a month, and I just stated to you a balanced market would be six months supply of inventory, mm -hmm. when you times six months times 4,000, there should be 24,000 houses available for sale. Mm -hmm. How many houses are available? You have the chart right in front of you. Oh, 5,400. 5, oh, so you mean there's only about one and a half months supply. Now, when you have mm -hmm. more than six months supply, we call that a buyer's market, which means who's in charge, the buyer or the seller? Buyer. The buyer. When you have less than six months in inventory, we call that a seller's market, which typically means who's pulling all the strings? Seller. And we've just discovered there's only one and a half months of supply of inventory, which means who's in charge? Seller. Yes, guys, so you need to know that. And so here's what I'd like to do. I wanna show you in the subdivision you're looking at right now, I pulled up MLS and- get that golf cart. Yeah, that golf cart is looking really good, guys. Because most buyers that go out don't have this type of educational consultation, so they walk into their first offer not knowing any of this information, and you're gonna be wiser than most. Here's the category I'd like to show you um, is where it says SP slash LP. That stands for sales price as compared to list price. Mm -hmm. So if it says 100, that means the house sold for the exact list price. If a person listed the house for 400,000, it sold for 400,000. If it says that first one says 1.02, that means that house sold for 2% over. And when it says 1.05, that means it sold for 5% over. Now on a $400,000 house, that means 20,000. So the house listed for 400, it sold for 420. Where you see it says 1.03, 1. Now there are two or three, there's three of them that say less than 1.00, which means there was some wiggle room. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if that, that house was overpriced to start with, or if it came back that there was something wrong with inspections and there was some sort of negotiation that went on. So this doesn't tell me that. But as you can see out of the 12 houses, nine of them paid the asking price or more. Mm -hmm. So John, this is your moment of truth. <laughs> I want you to look at Regina and I want you to tell me when you, when Regina finds the house she, she loves, and I'll know it because she has that twinkle in her eye and she's not saying anything and she's kicking you under the table and I know that's the house you want, that she wants, what are you prepared to do? Whatever 
your taste. Happy wife, happy life. I love that. I have that same philosophy. It sounds like you're potty trained just like me. Okay, so so I, I love that, and I need you to be more specific. What does what does that mean? Whatever it takes. I don't know what that means because what it means to you is different to me. I'm from upstate New York. When we say a big backyard, everybody's got acres. Mm. In Florida, you can put a zip code in an acre. Right, our backyards are 30, 40, 50 feet, that's big. Nobody wants to mow the lawn, nobody wants to be out in the heat. So a big backyard here is relevant to Florida's 50 feet. In upstate New York, my backyard was over 200 feet wide by 200 feet long. So when you say you're willing to do whatever it takes, let's spell it out, what does that mean? Uh, well, I'll give you an example. The house you're looking at, you said you're looking to spend 400,000. We find a house that's listed yeah. at 400,000. Regina has a twinkle in her eye. She's kicking you under the table and you're saying, stop, it hurts. What are you willing to do? I think we can go up to about 420. Okay, so you're prepared to do that. You understand what it's gonna to take to buy the house. I love that. It sounds like you're almost ready to buy a house. Okay, almost. almost. Yeah, well, we've still got a little bit more education to go oh, through. Because okay. we still don't have a full strategy. I'm like ready to go. go. <laughs> it's 420. <laughs> so you know that inventory is down. We already discussed that, yeah. right? So talk to me about, are you looking to pay cash for the house from the proceeds of the other deal, or is it gonna be financed? I like the message on the numbers. So. That is a very good question. Um, we're gonna pay cash. <laughs> okay, so when you yeah. say cash, you have to rely on the sale from the other house yeah. to pay for cash. Yeah. Are you sure? Okay, yeah. so that will give us some extra bargaining with a person. Cash deals typically uh, are looked on as a higher probability of closing, mm -hmm. and it's possible you have two offers, one that's 420 finance, one that's 420 cash. Typically, the one at 420 cash is gonna be accepted before the other one. All things remaining the same. And one of the reasons is appraisals. Appraisal is not mandatory on a cash deal, you can ask for one. Mm -hmm. uh, however, on a finance deal, it's mandatory. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the we don't order appraisals. The mortgage broker orders them because the bank won't lend the money, and it's a protect device to protect the person from overpaying for a house. Any questions? Do you guys plan on having appraisal even on a cash deal? Mm, well, you can run the numbers for us. Yes, so I let can. Let us know like, if we're in the ballpark. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, we can do that. So I absolutely love that. So what I'd like to do is we're gonna talk about uh, this term out there. Um, a lot of listings in the realtor only remarks, and I'm seeing less of it now, but it's still there. And I want you to be aware of it. It's called highest and best. Mm -hmm. Highest and best. When they talk about highest, what do you think they're talking about? Good price, huh? Yeah, seller wants, because that means what they're really saying is there's no negotiating. Highest and best means you give me one offer and we're either gonna say yes or no. Mm -hmm. So there's no chance to come back for a second offer. Now when they say best, what do you think they're talking about? Uh, terms. Terms, be specific. What type of terms? Uh, like that appraisal you mentioned or? Is there an appraisal? <laughs> what about home inspections? What about closing date? How about title company? How about the amount in escrow? Well, we definitely want an inspection. Yes, I, I definitely agree with you 100%. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's true, even if it's a brand new house, you need to have the home inspected. Don't assume the builder built the house properly. That's just not true. Right. No. We, have to, we have this all the time where people buy brand new houses, they don't do an inspection, they move in and they find out on day one, they, the plumber forgot to to screw in the trap from the tub on the second floor, you put on the shower of the tub and the ceiling in the kitchen falls down. Wouldn't you want to know that before you bought the house? Absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely. So let's talk about escrow for a second. So you're a cash deal, that's a bonus, right? That's gonna look really good to the seller. Do you know another thing that's gonna impact if they choose you over somebody else? is escrow, can I explain? Sure. Okay, so let's say you're looking at a $400,000 house and you offer 420 um, and you put down $1,000. Do you believe that people will cancel and walk away from a $1,000 escrow deposit? Mm -hmm. Happens every day. 
Now, let's say the other person puts in a $420,000 offer and you put down a $20,000 escrow deposit. Do you believe that people will walk away from a $20,000 escrow deposit? Not as easy. Uh, I've never seen it. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I've never witnessed it. So when a person puts the bigger the, the escrow deposit you put down, what you're really doing is you're screaming. You're screaming to the seller saying, hey, I want your house. And I'm willing to pay the money up front, 20 grand to secure it. Mm -hmm. They're going to look at your offer differently than one with 1,000 or 2,500 or 5,000. So typically I'm looking at 2%. And if it's a very competitive market where there's a lot of offers, we may want to think about putting down 20% mm -hmm. and then 20% after a satisfactory home inspection within 48 hours. So there'll be an additional deposit. Mm. So I'm just, I'm just pointing out strategies that we can use to win over a seller because I'm planning on being a multiple, even though real estate is down 14% from last year, it's still the fourth hottest year in the history of the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. We still have multiple offers. So I'm preparing you for that. Okay. And what we'd like to see is a minimum of 2% or 3% an escrow deposit, which is gonna help the seller focus on saying, this person really wants my house. Mm -hmm. Rich, I gotta ask, if, if we don't find ourselves in a more fall office situation, is, or do you think it would be okay if we just do like 1% on escrow? Well, what if you're the first offer that comes in and there's three more that come after you? Mm -hmm. So I will, what I will do before we write any offer, once we find a house that Regina is going to kick you under the table with. I'm going to call up that listing agent and ask them how many other offers are there. Now, the other agent has no obligation to answer that question. However, I've never found where an agent wouldn't give that information up. What they won't tell me is what those offers are for. Right. That is confidential. So typically, I would call them up and they would say, I've got two offers and I'm expecting two more by 5 o'clock. Okay. Now, if they say they have no offers, is it possible we make an offer, right? And then they don't present it because they're waiting for multiple offers that may be the instructions of the seller. And maybe they hold your offer for two days and by then they have four offers. And now when you thought you were coming from a place of strength with no other offers, you're a low man on the totem pole. And remember the house that she was kicking you under the table about? Now she's kicking you over the table because you made the wrong offer. Is that, was that your intention, John? Of course not. Yeah, I don't blame you. Like I said, you're, you're really good. She's got you really house trained. <laughs> so you understand, you understand now what highest invest means. How we structure the contract. There will be no, there'll be an inspection, there'll be no repairs. Now I wanna be clear, even though with your contract no repairs, says- repairs, the seller doesn't do repairs? Not in this market, no. And here's why, because they look at that contract as less than, it's less than the other offers. So we're gonna use an as-is contract. Now that doesn't mean it's no repairs, definitely. It just means that the way the contract is signed and everybody agrees there's no repairs for now. Once you do a home inspection, it is possible to negotiate something if it's big a repair like a roof or termites or air conditioning because once we notify them it becomes law that that new listing agent and seller must must disclose that to everybody on MLS now and it's going to make that house much harder to sell so we can use that and don't don't forget the seller has the right to cancel if you renegotiate so it's possible it may not be likely but it's possible for us to renegotiate after the contract is executed, yeah. which means signed and delivered, right? Once we get an inspection report, what I like to do is I email that report to the listing agent. I send it to send a receipt. So when they open it, I get notification that they open the email. And now that they've opened the inspection report and there's something on there, by law, they must disclose it in case that seller cancels. Mm -hmm. So I use that as a tool to your benefit. Yeah, because I'm not buying a house with termites, Rich. Yeah, I don't blame you either. But I'm not in, buying no as-is house with termites. <laughs> I get it, I get it. And here's one of the things that might, it may show that the house had termites at some point and it was eradicated and it was, and it was taken care of and there was no damage. But that may come up too. 
because the, the, the people who treated the house are gonna put stickers in, usually on the air conditioning, to say it's been treated for termites, things of that nature. So as we go through the inspection process, the, the home inspector will let us know. And as usual, I will communicate with you guys in a timely fashion so you can make the best decision for your family. Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. How much is this inspection? It depends on, on the size of the house and the home inspections. They're usually about somewhere between three and $500, and then there's another, another inspection which is called the, uh, the termite, the WDO, wood destroying organisms, which is separate. That's usually about 75 or $100. Uh, so wood destroying organism would be termites, carpenter ants, or wood rot. Water would qualify as a, as a wood destroying organism. So a windowsill, anything made out of wood over time, if water sits on it, it destroys the wood. It's considered a, a WDO, wood destroying organism. So we're gonna find this will all be in your reports. So we can sit down. Now, a lot of times what that means, maybe just a piece of the wood has to be cut out and they put some Bondo in there like they do on cars, it's wood Bondo, and it costs 20 bucks to fix. These are not major things. But roofing, foundation cracks, those are the things that may be deal killers. And that's important that they inspect those items. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yeah, because I've heard about this insurance stuff going on with the roof, age of the roof and all this yeah. stuff. Well, it's a little bit harder in the state of Florida to get home insurance, especially if your house is more than 15 or 20 years old. Then. Mm -hmm. They want a new roof put on. So that's something we can, on my search, I can look at houses that are less than 10 years old, so you won't, it's less likely that you'll have that scenario because they may say there's no insurance available for that. Okay. There's not many carriers anymore. So are you ready to get to the fun part about buying a house? Yeah. We're, we're going to talk. We're not. We're not ready to leave yet. We're not going out yet. So this yet. is this is where we talk about. I'm going to ask you three different categories. I want you to describe to me mm -hmm. what your perfect house is going to be looking like based on the questions I'm about to ask you. Are you ready for that? Okay. Here are the three categories. The first category is I want to know things that the house must have, not that you'd like to have them, and I'll give you some example. Must have. Now, some people say that they must have a laundry room that's in the house because if it's in the yes. garage, it's 120 degrees in the summer there. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a must have. Yep. Once you tell me must have, then any house that has it not in the house, any, any, any listing that's in the garage, we're not even gonna look at that. I'm not gonna pull them up. So be very careful what you say is a must have because you're eliminating a lot of houses that might fit all your other descriptions. So, what are some of the things that you absolutely must have? Because if they're not there, you don't want to waste your time. You told me time's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. What do they look like? Well, uh, yeah. definitely indoor. Definitely indoor. Washer and dryer. The Laundry one. room is. Oh, right, hold on. Let me. You said washer and dryer. Is it possible you can buy one without one and then just buy a washer and dryer? No, laundry room area. area. Oh, okay. Washer dryer. No, we inside, need the laundry room inside the house. Inside yeah. laundry room. Yeah. Okay. I want to make sure I get this right. That's why I'm going to ask questions. What else? Two car garage, minimum. I was going to say even three cars. Preferred. That'd be preferred. So. And a 55 plus? So, so let me get this right. Must. Let me get this right. So if it's, if you're saying minimum two, you're saying minimum three. Who's going to win this battle? Because John's saying show you two car garage houses. You're saying no. So which is it? Well, I need you to make a decision. Look at look at John's Yeah. Three would be preferred. Yeah, just be with low inventory. So two is mandatory and three would be we'd like to have. Yeah. Okay. Wish list. Yeah. Okay, two car garage, what else? What about granite in the kitchen at least? So granite or or granite quality. Could be quartz, could be quarry. Yeah, stone so, okay. stone counter. Oh my god. Now that I'm thinking about it, Rich, <laughs> gotta have the dual vanities because they're getting ready, you know, with the makeup going on, I need to just be able to get on the stage. <laughs> so definitely must have. He's more bougie than I am, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's using the blow dryer more than the girl. <laughs> so, so what else must you have? Is there anything else that's the must have? Okay, so let's talk to the next category, things you'd like to have. So on, on things you'd like to have, we said three well, car garage. I think also we do need the screened in lanai. You oh, guys have like these lanai yeah. things here. I think that's yeah. what you call them, right? Is that a must or a like? No, I think that's a must. A must. Yeah. Okay, so if there's, if there's a, if there's a, um, 
under roof shaded area that doesn't have a screen, you don't even want to look at it. I mean, because you can put a screen up yourself for a couple thousand dollars. How big are you talking about? How, how, well, you tell me what, do you want 100 square feet under roof? As a patio or the lanai, do you want 500? Well, I think you can extend these things out and then screen them in. Okay. Is what I've seen. So what okay, I'm saying say is, let's, let's... Let's say this, Rich. Okay. If it's on the golf course and not screened in. Okay, so golf course. So is this a must or you'd like to have it on the golf course? Uh, we'll put on the cage if we're on the golf course. If it's got a screened in lanai, then we'll take it anywhere in Kings Ridge. Okay, so... Even if it's not a screen in, if there's the possibility you can put a screen on there, that's yeah. you'd like to have. On the golf course. On the I got golf course yeah. down. Yeah. Hearing you loud and clear. Okay. What else would you like to have? Do you want solar panels? <laughs> so, solar panels would be nice. Okay. So most houses don't have solar panels, but is that something you can add after the purchase if that means that much to you? So that's that's a like to have, not a must have. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about if we're done with that, let's move on to things that you definitely do not want. Now it could be some people don't want a swimming pool. They're afraid grandchildren or children are yeah. going to drown. God forbid. Things Probably like that. no pool. So tell me things. Tell me things that you do not want because if they're present, you don't even want to look at the house. Don't yeah. don't bring me in. Don't waste my time. What don't you want? No, no carpet. No pool. No pool. Well, carpet you can change out. So Possibly no pool. Cats and dogs and the smell of this one. Well, let me ask you: If there were some carpeting in the house, is it possible if you loved everything about the house that you can buy the house and rip out the rug and put in a flooring that you like and not have somebody else choose the flooring for you, whether it was tile, travertine, hardwood? As long as the drywall doesn't stink like cats. Then we got a whole other issue. It's so, possible, but it's more money down the road, you know? So it's more money down the road, but what if there's no other houses that fit that criteria? Because most houses have some bedrooms or areas that have. How about, is there a way to separate houses with carpet and houses without carpet? Are there you? are. The, the agent should put in MLS the ones that have what the flooring is. Uh, but my experience is most houses have some rug in there. Uh, we can find houses that have less of that and maybe there's some rug couple of bedrooms and you just have to rip out the rugs in the bedrooms yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think like that rich we can do that be better. it's just at least the common areas that don't have the so rugs. this is you prefer no rugs but it's not mandatory that it has all okay. you got all the vendors so you're gonna tell yeah i've got flooring people too it's called flooring decor you go and you buy the tiles or hardwood floor at a very cheap price and i got vendors to cover that. okay so what else what else don't you want Talk to me about welds or or, or uh, septic or is that a no big deal? Is it a definite? Talk I think we want sewer. Yeah, definitely. Sewer. So water and sewer. No. Well, Kings Ridge has sewer. We know that. Okay. Yeah. So if there's no, if the house has a well, you don't even want to see it. If the house has septic, you don't even want to see it. You don't even want to know about it. Yeah, we don't really we don't want to cut or grass or anything like that. We're in like retirement phase. Oh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so there's no septic, no well. Anything else? Um, I'm not super picky. Yeah, no, I think that would be about it. Well, I don't know. John, what do you think? Do you think she's picky? Hey. Well, she got me, right? Yeah, she got you. <laughs> she got high standards. She got high standards. <laughs> Love that. Love it. And I'm so glad that we can have fun together. So guys, I think I have a really good picture of what you want. Yeah. Uh, so from now, I know we've been here for, I don't know, probably 45 minutes or so, 40 minutes or so. I, I, what I'd like to do is my research and get back with you in less than 24 hours. By this time tomorrow or sooner, I'm gonna set up some things. Now, are you available to go either later today or tomorrow to go out and look? Yeah. Now, we're only in town till like Saturday, right? Yeah, and then we're going to the parks in the afternoon tomorrow, so early. We got tomorrow morning. Well, you're here for Florida to visit or are you here to buy a house? A little bit of both. Okay, so what's more important? Both. I mean, house. I gotta see Mickey Mouse. Right. You're not going to Disney. So, can I just be honest with you guys? Okay. Buying a house, you, you have to be 100% in, and I'm not sensing that right now, because I know you want to go to the grandkids to the park. 
But are you willing to sacrifice a lifetime of spending with your grandkids because you spent one day in the park and missed out on the deal of the century? John, you want to go to the park, so. Well, I guess it's I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying I'm testing your motivation because I'm 100% in going to do my very best to get this done. And to be honest with you guys, I'm not going to show you 10 houses or 12 houses. I'm going to show you three houses. One of them is going to be your house. And we're going to write an offer on one of those three. When I do my three job houses. properly, wow. when the agent does their job price properly, it's three houses. One of those three is going to be the house you're going to purchase. Not because I said so because she's gonna kick you in the, under the table again. Right, so that's, that's what this consultation is about, is getting a strategy, finding out exactly what's gonna make her tick, make exactly the house that you want, build that white picket fence with the four kids, the four grandkids, the door name spot, whatever that looks like, right? And I'm gonna do my job. Now, when I once I do my job, I need to know that you're ready to do yours. Well, let's say if it's only three houses, it shouldn't take all day. So no. maybe we go look at the house in the morning, and then if we have to push back the parks, we can do it the following day. Yeah, that, that's that fine. Flexibility that, that, that's, yeah. that's fine. So one other thing is I'm going to need proof of funds from you because the, when we submit an offer, the listing agent's going to say, okay, it's a cash deal. I need to, can you prove that you got the cash, right? So that's important because if I don't have that, it's not as strong as an offer that does have that. Mm -hmm. So I, so again, if you're waiting for the proceeds to come from your house, that's okay. We can just show your house that's gonna be listed, what that's listed for, how much money you're supposed to net off of that, and a <coughs> bank account, wherever you have some cash you know, hidden, whatever, in a pillow, whatever you have in money. And it, you can erase the account number. I don't need the account number. What I need on there is your two names, or one of your names, and a dollar amount to show that you have the money to pay for the house. Because if you can't prove you have the money to pay for the house, they're saying it's not a cash offer. Mm. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, we can do that. So when will I have that by? I will have that for you tomorrow. Beautiful, before we see the house. Because once we see the house and you find one of those three that you're gonna make an offer on, I'm ready to rock and roll and I need that like now. Because in an hour or two, that house could be sold. You saw that we're in the fourth hottest market in the history yeah. of the world. Well, we'll talk to our agent and she can get us the net sheet. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, love that. So at this point, do you have any questions for me? You didn't ask us how much money we want to spend. Well, you put that in the email in the beginning, you said 400,000. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> maybe, maybe you didn't have your coffee. That was the very first thing we discussed. Okay, I can remember that part. <laughs> so any other questions? I love that you brought that up. So we're all on the same wavelength? Oh, that's right. You said 400 and you go to 420. 420. Yeah, that's right. All right, guys, did they do a great job? All right, don't go anywhere. We're not done. We're not done. So now I didn't go for a buyer's agent agreement on this. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I wanted to stop to see what questions you had until this point, because we're going 40 minutes, 35 minutes. With the, with the, you now know what it looks like to do a full-blown buyer consultation. Did I cover all the angles? Did I cover those 12 topics? Did I take notes? Did I ask for permission to take notes? Mm -hmm. Guys, does everybody understand what it looks like? When you set the expectations up front, there's less of a chance of having fallout in the back end. And what I'm noticing, is most agents don't do the consultation or they do 10 minutes, which is abbreviated from what I did, and then there's a much higher chance you're gonna have a cancellation. Did I put John on the spot and say, John, now when Regina kicks you under the table and has that twinkle in her eyes, and you know that she wants to buy that house, what are you prepared to do? You, did I raise my tonality? And he says, whatever it takes, was that good enough for me? Did I accept that as an answer? No. I said, you're gonna have to spell it out for me because I don't know what that means, right? You guys gotta dig, do you, I, did I go second level, third level, fourth level with questions? Did I ask a ton of questions? You have four questions? Uh, well, a couple of things that I had, yeah. Uh, the first one was when you said on the inspection that you send that over to, um, with confirm receipt. Now, um, how do you do that? Read receipt. And are they required to give that to the seller? Because I probably wouldn't. 
They are not, but the moment they open that email, they are required by law if that deal cancels to post it on MLS, everything that's wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's and how do you, how do you In do hindsight, that? don't ever open an email from a buyer's agent that sends you a home how, inspection. How do you get Don't that open it. Confirm receipt, I don't know how to do that. You set it up on your email. Mm -hmm. On Gmail, can you do that? When you run it down at the bottom, it says, Oh, okay. See that? I didn't know. I don't know how to do that either. Okay. So was that one aha you can take away? One other thing that I took away was. It's called read receipt. Okay. When, when they were putting in the offer. Effort, Hold on, guys. I can't have Paul. Okay. One other thing that I that came to mind was when they were going to put in 420 on a four, uh, something listed for 400, wouldn't an escalation be better in that situation so they, they could get the best deal possible? It depends. I will tell you that most agents don't know what an escalation clause is if they're outside of Keller Williams. So they, a lot of agents say we're not accepting escalation clauses because they don't understand it. Okay. That's they the don't understand. So you run, I'm not saying don't use it. You had, if you use it, you had better make sure that the listing agent understands it and they're able to explain it. Because if they say we're not, if they say we're not ex accepting those, that means he doesn't understand it or she doesn't understand it. Okay. That's code word. They don't want to tell you I'm less than or I don't know. I don't have training and education in my broker, That's so they say we're not accepting it. Well, you're supposed to put it in your summary of the offer in, in your email. Mm -hmm. okay. They don't. You might have to call them and explain to them what it means. That's a conversation. summary, though, what I send over the offer. That's a conversation I have with an agent prior to submitting an offer, is, uh, you know, are you aware what a, uh, a uh, whatchamacallit, Escalator. escalatory clause is, and are you willing to present that to, to the seller? And if they say no, then don't yeah. go that route. Yeah. yeah. Um, in regards to proof of funds, don't you want to know those proof of funds and have that conversation prior to even taking them out? You want to know yeah. how strong that file is? So yesterday or tomorrow is <coughs> really good enough because that's the day you're showing them. You want to know today what it is. Yeah, well, I'm not showing him. I don't know if you caught at the end of saying because I have to have that before we go out. Okay. Because when it, when we find that house that Regina has the twinkle in her eye and kicks rock you under the table, <laughs> we need to rock and roll and have that letter ready to go. Because if we, we wait an hour, the house could be sold. <laughs> so I did cover that. That was probably the last thing that I said. Because we're at the end. It's the last yeah, we're ready to go see houses. Yeah, we're yeah. almost at that point. So one of the things that I do is I have a buyer loyalty agreement that I'm about to ask you to sign. However, before I ask you to sign anything, I'm going to tell you why it's in your best interest. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. So in MLS, you've just seen a report that there's very few listings out there. Uh, maybe 5,000 listings roughly you saw on that report. And we're selling 4,000 houses a month, which means there's a one and a half month supply of inventory. Well, what if there was more supply of inventory that wasn't showing up on, on MLS? Would you be interested to see those houses? Yeah. So one of the value adds that I do is I'm very big with for sale by owners, which means I door knock them on a daily basis or a weekly basis, and I get them to sign a, a buyer commission agreement with me. In other words, I tell them, you're gonna, I'm not putting your house on MLS, I don't represent the seller. However, because I do have an extensive database of buyers, if I do bring a buyer mm -hmm. by and that you make an offer that they agree to pay me a commission. Mm -hmm. So I have houses, a matter of fact, I have these 12 listings right here that I can show you that don't show up on MLS. Now, no other agent can show this house because they don't have what I have, because they're not doing what I do, because they don't prospect, knock on doors, have conversations with for sale by owners. Now, I don't know if any of these 12 houses that I have agreements with are gonna be a fit for you, but if they are, would you like me to include those and in, to show those houses? So this way, because if it's a for, by sale, a for sale by owner, typically they don't wanna list because they don't wanna pay the commission. Mm -hmm. And I get it, I respect that. Okay. These people are willing to pay a commission and it's not on MLS. So if you go to any other agent, they could search MLS, they don't show up. I have access to these 12 houses. Does that interest you? Yes. Okay, all I need you to do is sign here and press hard. <laughs> press hard. How hard was that? Now, was anything I said a lie? No! Did I have did I have buyer commission agreements with for sale by owners? Yes, that was part of my marketing. I used to door knock for sale by owners. Guys, and it's so easy. There's so many different things you can use. 
I'm just going to give you confidence that you can not going to afford a for sale by owner. So who wants to be a for sale by owner? Come on, these guys have been for the So Tom, so knock knock, you open the door. How are you? I love that. I love that. My name's Rich. I'm with Keller Williams Realty, and I understand you're looking to sell your house. It says for sale by owner. Have you gotten any offers? I've got no offers, and I'm not working with Rosie. Have a good day. Listen, before you close the door, I'm not here to get your listing. You're buying a house somewhere else, I'm assuming. I would like to interview for the job to help you represent you on the buy side, and you don't pay my commission. The seller would. So would you like to have an experienced agent help you to buy a house? I'm not interested in is that the easiest lead gen to get a buyer? Go knock on a for sale by owner. They don't want to pay a commission. He's not paying my commission. The seller is. If he's selling his house, he's moving somewhere else. Now Tom can say, I'm moving to <coughs> Vietnam. I say, you know what? That's great. We've got agents in Vietnam too. I've got, <laughs> I've got offices there. We're in 53 countries. Do you understand how easy this is? Could you take this in any direction you want? Now the truth is when I door knock and build a relay, now Tom's got the door closed like this much, now he's all, because now I'm saying I, I'll work for you for free. I'll work for you. Wouldn't you like to have an experienced person like me work for you for free and you don't have to pay them? Tom's opening the door, said you want cookies and milk. He's inviting me in, I'm his best friend now. Mm. See guys, you're just not thinking outside. You're not disrupting the market and doing the things it takes to be successful in real estate. Now could you go another route with that? Could I say, so Tom, I'm not here to get your listing. I have a database with 1,100 people in there. Seven, and this is true. That my database had 1,100 people, approximately 700 uh, buyers in there. If I were to market your house and send them pictures and do a flyer and bring you an offer for your house, would you be willing to pay me a buyer's commission? Here's what 80% of the people said to that. Yes. They don't want to pay the listing commission. They would say, well, how much is that? Or what is a buyer's commission? And I would say that's 3%. Now, I'm not putting on MLS. I don't represent you. You can still sell your house and pay me absolutely nothing. It's only if I bring the buyer, write an offer, and you accept all the terms of that offer, will you be agreeing to pay me 3%. And 80% of the people I asked that question to said yes. Now you know how I got the 12 buyer commission agreements that are not on MLS. That's the question I asked. So I was willing to do things other agents weren't willing to do. So I don't care if you're a buyer's agent on a team, should you be knocking on for sale by owners? Yes, because there are buyers somewhere else. Now, if they're in Claremont, Winter Garden, great. If they're buying in California, could you refer it? Yes. Will you still get a commission? Yes. What if they're renting? Well, oh, then no. <laughs> we don't deal with tenants because there's no money in tenants, right? That's the truth of the matter. You'll spend more money on gas and time than you will on, on the commission. In the bottle. Yeah, it's just crazy. What do, what do we do with those people? I have like three of them that just say they're not ready to buy and they're renting at twenty three hundred a month. It's like I don't I don't know what to do with. I would people. do a rental analysis versus a purchase analysis and show them that they're wasting money. Yeah, I try. I, yeah, try to like rent them. They won't take the call from the lender. You know. It's... Move on. Next. Mm -hmm. Don't don't keep beating a horse after it's dead. Will, it's dead. Bury the horse. Some will, some won't. Yes. And that, there you go. Now, does anybody have any questions on Zoom about buyer agency agreements or yes. buyer commission agreements? Uh, Nadia is asking, do we need to sign an MLS exclusion form? No, it doesn't go on MLS. This is not MLS. This is not a listing. Exclusion form for listing. This is not a listing. I don't have a listing. Kind of like what about the buyer disclosure, the 299? Yeah. Last, uh, if, if I'm charging the for sale by owner? Oh, I, would be, I wouldn't be charging the for sale by owner 299 or 295. Sorry, I, I would be charging the, I'd be charging the buyer. Sorry. We do a class on the uh, buyer broker agreement, the, the bar bar buyer broker, and we'll, if, if, if wanted, we'll do another one that walks through every line of that buyer broker agreement and do go through scripts with it if that's something that's of, of interest. It's been yeah. well received. Yeah. So guys, here's what I want to do in wrap up because we're two minutes over and I still have a major announcement to make to you guys while you're in the room. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. You're doing that sales round like that. Yeah, that's a 12 third. Yeah, this class ended three uh -huh. minutes ago. Are we done? I'm giving you a sneak peek. Yeah. Are we done? Oh. You're here now. Okay, that's right. 
Yes. Are we done recording? Yes, we're done recording. So guys.